Jordan Peterson is not doing so well. And I got to admit, I'm pretty worried for the guy. I think he's a cool dude. I wish him the best. I wish his family the best. I hope he recovers. The latest update is that he's in Russia trying to undergo a rapid detox to certain procedure they wouldn't do here. It's my understanding. I could be wrong. But he's trying to get off benzos, which I know very little about. Apparently, it had to do with a food allergy. He got prescribed this. He then went on, you know, some all beef diet. I don't know a whole lot, but I'm not super. I'm not I'm not I'm not here to criticize the decisions of individuals when they have. Look, I, I think the all beef diet is strange. I wouldn't do it. In fact, I only uh, uh, I, I typically don't eat beef uh, for a lot for a lot of reasons. But the real reason mainly I just it kind of makes me sick. But I, I do have these really cool like exotic jerky things that have beef in them. I, that, that tends to be fine for me. But I typically try to just do fish and everybody has their preferences. But Jordan Peterson is being ridiculed and insulted by the woke left. They're insulting him. And it is it's downright terrifying what these people think and what they want. And heaven forbid they ever get any power. I have no problem criticizing Peterson for certain things that I don't I don't agree with. But he's been nothing but civil and cordial for the most part, literally to everybody. They just hate him so much. I want to read you the story from the post millennial social justice lunatics celebrate Jordan Peterson's struggles. That to me is terrifying. Look, I just did a segment talking about Rush Limbaugh and his lung cancer and how never been a big fan of the guy, not really followed him, to be honest. But there's certain things I've seen from him I'm not a fan of, but I would never wish ill or harm on 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 people, especially someone like Jordan Peterson, who's such a tepid, like lukewarm kind of dude. And I mean that respectfully. He's not a bombastic guy. He doesn't come out and shriek and yell and wave. He's very calm. So I've actually been fascinated by what makes Peterson so prominent. I mean, I, I mean this. He does these YouTube seminars. He speaks and people really seem to love this guy. One thing I've said in the past is that I feel like he gives young men this this mission. He gives them a sense of uh, promise, responsibility, purpose, right? I can understand that. But one thing I, tr- I find truly fascinating is that I have several pretty lefty friends who are fans of Jordan Peterson. I'm not exaggerating. And that was surprising to me. I think what we're about to read with these people ragging on Peterson represent a fringe psychotic faction of people that tend to dominate the narrative. One thing I've also been surprised by is that I've had progressives and moderate Democrats actually reach out to me, praising me. And I'm not exaggerating about this. I, I, I like what I mean to say is often I get messages from uh, supportive moderates. It's, it's fairly typical, actually. But I've actually spoken with some socialist, democratic socialist types who have actually told me that they respect my opinions and my approach to everything. And I was, I was profoundly grateful. I was surprised. I think there's one really important reality happening, and it's that, or what, one really, there's, there's something important happening. When you see things like this, people wishing harm and hate and pain on someone like Jordan Peterson, you'll notice that even progressives, some people even saying, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. What is this? Look, I've known many people who are very, you know, hardcore activists, and I've seen them give it all up because they realize the hate, the fire that burns around them and how awful it really is. You don't have to change what you want to be. Like, let's say you really do believe in, you know, woke intersectional feminism. I got no problem so long as you're not an authoritarian who wishes harm and pain and suffering on others. We're trying to make the world a better place. And I found those people actually exist across the board. One of the most profound things that ever happened to me was when I interviewed a full on communist wearing like, you know, communist garb and everything, mask and, and, and all that, telling me that Antifa was making them look bad and said they shouldn't be going around hitting people. That's like authoritarianism. And I was like, wow, shake your hand, man. I don't care what you believe as long as you're not violent and oppressing others. But these people are terrifying. Let's read. The millennial writes, Jordan B. P- Jordan B. Peterson's personal troubles are uh, celebrated by his detractors. After his daughter, Michaela Peterson, opened up about the difficulties her father faced during this past year, a torrent of ill wishes were released to social media. A data scientist, engineer, and social justice activist had this to say, do I think he deserves sympathy despite him not extending it to others? No. She said, do I think Jordan Peterson deserves a pass on his bigotry because he's suffering? No. But do I think he deserves dignity despite the situation being a product of his views that he profits from? No. But do I think he deserves sympathy despite him not extending it to others? Also, no. That's just not real. It's not reality. These are nasty, vile people. And if, and if you find yourself aligned with them, I want you to look in the mirror and ask yourself why you want to be so nasty. So, so just 
evil. I think about what it means to be truly evil. And for me, you know, and I think to an extent looking at kind of D&D, it's, it's, it's almost just like hurting others for no real reason. Did Jordan Peterson really suffer from the product of his own views? No. He was prescribed benzos and developed a physical dependency. It happens to many people, many good people, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with asking for help. We are social beings. We create rehab and detox for a reason. Just because you're prescribed a medication you became addicted to, it's, n- it's not about your character. In fact, the willingness to do the right thing to save yourself and improve yourself shows more character than not. Admitting you are wrong, asking for help shows that you have confidence in yourself. This person truly terrifies me because even if someone was a nasty person, I would still try to extend sympathy for one simple reason. I've stated it before that if someone does wrong, I will offer up to them an opportunity to do right. Otherwise, their only option is to drift in the wrong direction continually. People got mad at me that I said, you know what? Joey Salads, famous YouTuber, did that really horrible thing with that video. He got caught. And at first I was angry, but I decided, you know what? I'm going to give the guy a second chance. Otherwise, what's the alternative? If people don't give him the opportunity to join back in with the, you know, the rest of you know, society in, in a principled, like in, the, rest of, the rest of society, then the only option he has is to drift into the shadows. And the same is true with someone like Carlos Maza. And boy, did people get mad about that too. I'm not a fan of the guy. I think he's wrong. I think he's kind of nasty. But hey, we'll see what happens. I'd like him to do the, the right thing. I'd like him to, to have a chance to see what it's really like to be independent and struggle when the media is targeting you. And maybe he won't, he won't experience that. But what can I say? Pencils have erasers and you at least give a second chance. Maybe not more than that. Of course, already, I'm sure people are, you know, already angry about me either bringing up Joey Salads or bringing up Carlos Maza. And then they point to me and call me the stupid milquetoast fence hitter who needs to pick a side and point the finger and scream at someone. I'll tell you this. These people, absolutely, I would give them an opportunity to apologize. And if they did, I would appreciate it. I would say thank you. But these are the people who, are, who never back down. These people tweet these things all the time. It's not just this one moment. They do this all the time. And still, if they decided to change, I'd, be, I'd say okay. So that's what I would ask for right now. Jordan Peterson spoke his views to try and help people. And he did. It's why his book sold so well. It's why his message resonates with people. They're doing better because of it. They wouldn't come back if he was making their lives worse. So why wish pain and suffering? I mean, on anyone, really. When it comes to like the worst of society, criminals, and like the worst ones, I still wouldn't wish pain and suffering on them because it doesn't solve anything. You know, it's interesting. I remember seeing this viral clip. There was a man who I think he was like a serial killer or something. And he ended up killing a young woman. Everyone who came to speak about the pain he caused insulted him and, and, and called him the worst things in the world and said, you're a disgusting, vile monster. And he sat there stone faced until finally a man came up. And, and I'll tell you this. Google search the story because I'm probably butchering it. But this is the general idea. A man came up and he said, I forgive you. And, and that was the gist of it. He says, I can't hold this hatred in me. And all of a sudden, this evil, this evil man broke down in tears, crying. It's, it's, it's crazy. I don't know why. I don't know if it matters. I don't know if you care. But to me, it says there, there, there's so much of this world that people don't seem to realize is, is uh, counterintuitive. Solving the problem of, you don't like Jordan Peterson. Okay, right? Let's say you don't like him. The answer isn't to wish pain and suffering on his family. Well, that'll make him double down. The answer is to invite them over for, for a drink, to have a conversation and figure out where you, where you break from, you know, like where you disagree. But too often we see people who would rather have that cathartic release, that symbol of taking down something they don't like. They never stop to think about who Jordan is as a person, what he's trying to do, and how he could be mischaracterized by his enemies, or how he maybe just be wrong. And he said he's wrong in the past. It's one of the reasons I have tremendous respect for the guy. When he was asked a question by Jim Jeffries about civil rights, Peterson just simply said, maybe I was wrong about that. Respectable. Absolutely. But too many people don't want to extend the opportunity to, to uh, you know, an olive branch. If there's someone you don't like, you don't win by insulting and smearing them and wishing them harm. This person says, but wait a second, I thought an all meat diet and toxic masculinity was a key to a happy life. See, he never said that. He never, look, I think the all meat diet, the carnivore diet, not for me. I think it's kind of, I think it's bad. And based on what I've read, 
I've, I've seen some people have tremendous successes with it in certain areas. But if he wants to eat whatever he wants to eat, man, you go, go do it. But when did he ever say anything about toxic masculinity? And I'll, I'll wrap it up with this because, you know, th this was going to be a five hour long video if I just don't just stop. What they're saying right there shows exactly what's wrong with this fringe element of the left. I think this is going to drive people away from them. I thought toxic masculinity was a very specific subset and that feminists weren't criticizing masculinity. Huh. Then why is it that Jordan Peterson, who is trying to stop toxic masculinity, is accused of promoting it? Because these people have no principles. They're simply tribalists who want to jump on the bandwagon. They hate. So there are many people that I've found who are progressive or even socialist. Dare I say one that communist? That was nuts. We all agree freedom, individual liberties, you know, to an extent. I'd imagine seeing this, seeing the paradox and seeing the rage and the hatred is going to drive many people away. And it's probably why they're breaking up a little bit. If you find yourself being surrounded by these people, you know, again, like I said, look in the mirror. Maybe you found yourself marching with Antifa. I get it. That's fine. In many circumstances, I really do get it because as much as it's not often highlighted, and I've, I've tried to bring it up periodically, Antifa has actually gone out and targeted, you know, fringe far right or like, you know, neo-Nazi groups. You want to protest that? I get it. And actually, my friends and I have actually covered some of these protests against legitimate fascists. The problem is when you see these hate-filled people just screaming at the top of their lungs at a regular old, old like, like an old lady in Berkeley. And that's when you've got to stop and realize maybe you're on the side of the baddies, the hate, the vile vitriolic behavior that just brings pain and suffering. You might not like Jordan Peterson, but you'll never win by doing this. And to everybody on the right, that goes the same for the people on the left. When you, you know, the, the, the things people have said about many progressive commentators, I'm like, hey, man, I, I, I say the, I'll say the same about someone on the left as I will on the right. If you approach them as an enemy and insult them, you are never going to actually win an argument. You know, there's got to be some space. Maybe I'm just a stupid milk toast fence or whatever. I don't know. Look, I wish Jordan Peterson the best. I'm, I'm sad to hear this. I, I really was moved when I saw that video from his daughter concerned for his health and safety. And I hope he has a, a recovery. But more importantly, whatever happens, I hope he can find peace, relaxation, recovery with the ones he cares about. Whether he can come back to the public life is, is less important. So perhaps instead of d just trying to kick a man when he's down, they could say nothing and just hope maybe Jordan Peterson retires. Instead, they want to make sure they make everyone feel pain. I don't get it. I'll leave it there. I got one more segment coming up for you in a few minutes, and I will see you all shortly.